Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 30. So this time I want to touch a little more on player press which we used a little bit in the last episode but didn't fully cover per se and I'd also like to create a script which will allow us to pause our game. So if you remember the last episode we had to use a player pref within this creaky door script. So I'm just going to reopen it and explain a little more detail how we can use player prefs as when we did the last episode I didn't quite expect, I didn't kind of uh, pre-think that we'd use player prefs but we did. So the idea of what a player pref is, it's a way of saving data within the Unity file and then reloading it. And we've used an example here of a float. This can also be done with other types of variables as well. So the one this refers to is the player casting script, which is uh, somewhere here. So initially, because these two languages are completely different, we can't actually or physically transfer data from one to the other. We have to actually use player prefs. It is the easiest and best way to transfer data from one script language to another. In this case, we have set a variable inside something we've called the casting and this is the variable that we've actually set and when we need to call that again instead of using set float we use get float so like i say this can be used with different things we could use an integer for example so it would be get int and set int for example the great use for player press is a way of creating save files and what i'd like to do at um at some point probably in the next uh, couple of tutorials somewhere, is actually start creating these save files using player prefs. And what it is, for example, is we could set a load of variables to say that we've done this, we've done this, we haven't done this, but we've done this. And then that creates um, an integer. And then we can load that integer and do different things in the game. So we kind of load our position again. So that is the top and bottom of player prefs. We will get into them once again at uh, some point, because like I say, we'll use them for saving. So rest of this tutorial, we're going to look at pausing the game. Now, obviously, pausing the game is something that everyone requires at some point. And by default, there's no quick and easy way to create a pause state because it takes a little bit of debugging which we'll more than likely get to during this tutorial. So what we're going to do first off is create a brand new C Sharp script. So right click create C Sharp script and we'll just call it pause game. So within this we're going to have to actually put in uh, an extra namespace up here because we need to work with the first person controller as well. I'll explain why a little as we get into that section. So underneath using Unity Engine, we need to put using Unity Engine dot, uh, sorry, not Unity Engine, it's Unity Standard Assets, my apologies. Standard Assets, because hopefully you've guessed it by now, we need to reference that first person controller, which is part of the standard assets and it's part of the characters and it is well we already know first person and semicolon because like I say we need to reference whatever is contained in here later on so we're going to do all of this in update because we need this to constantly monitor our button presses to say this is our pause button we don't need start and we don't need the notes so what we'll need is two variables. We're going to need a game object, which will be the player, and we'll need a bool, so true or false. So public bool, and we'll call it paused. And we'll make it default false, because when we start the game, it isn't going to be paused. And as I say, the second one is going to be the player. And that's a game object, and we'll just call it the player semicolon so what we need to do is monitor for pressing a button and i think by default i'm going to use escape so if we go back to unity go to edit and go to project settings and go to input here is the word cancel and cancel is dictated by the positive button escape so when we press escape this will be triggered so that means that we'll need to use this script 
based on the name cancel. So within the script, what we need to do is if input dot get button down and in brackets and quotes cancel and quote close bracket close bracket open curly bracket so basically if you want a different button if you want for example uh, the p button to be the pause button then in input you just need to add in an extra one by adding size as whatever uh, is that so it'd be 21 and then naming it whatever you would want it to be so if you wanted your name to literally be pause and the positive button would be p but that would mean here you would have to put pause instead of cancel. So once we've checked if that's happening or not, we need to check the pause state. So i.e. we need to check if it's true or false. So if paused equals false, then we do the following. And the way we pause the game is manipulate the time scale of the Unity uh, game itself. So we can do time with a capital T dot time scale. Remember that's a lowercase t, uppercase s equals zero. So that literally freezes everything within the game to a certain degree. You'll see as we complete this script. <clears throat> uh, at this point, we will set the paused variable as true semicolon and at this point we need to set the player's camera as inactive and that means that within the FPS controller we have to turn off this first person controller script so to do that we just do the player dot get component spiky brackets uh, first person controller open close bracket dot enabled equals false so you'll see this is the reason we've had to use this in the namespace because we're referencing this right here if you didn't have this up here in the namespace this would come up as an error it would have that red uh, jagged underline to say it's not right um, then at that point we will put the cursor as visible so cursor dot visible equals true semicolon <clears throat> so at this point that means our game is paused and basically we need to do the inverse of that so we need to reverse it so if we press cancel again it unpauses the game to do that if we go beneath our if statement and go else open curly bracket we can then put the player dot get component and in spiky brackets same again the first person controller open close bracket dot enabled equals true so it allows us to have movement back within our character now we'll point out here that even though we're using this if you didn't have this line the player wouldn't be able to move but you'd still be able to move the camera that's why we have this line in here Next, we have paused equals false. So the pause state is false, so it's the game is active. And then at that point, time dot time scale equals one. So one is the default level. An example of that would be if it was two, everything would be twice as fast. And let's save that script. Everything should close here. So this closes our else statement. This closes our original if statement, this closes our method, and this one should close the public class. Excellent. Let's head back to Unity. And no errors. Perfect. So, game object, create empty, and let's rename and call it paused object. And then, you've guessed it, drag and drop that onto there. And you'll notice here we have that public bool to say, yep, it's paused or it's not paused. And the player, we just need to drag and drop. And save our scene. Now, as we go into this, you'll notice something very strange occur. When we press play, go into our game as normal, a 
escape to pause, you can see the game pauses and we're back in the game once we press escape again. However, if we press play, and hopefully this should work, let's head to our spiders over here, pause the game, they still move towards us. Now, the reason this is happening is because we need to go to the spider enemy uh, script, which, uh, let me find the spider first. It is the spider follow script. The reason this happens is because their enemy speed is not being dictated by um, the time which Unity runs on. To fix that, all we would have to do is make the enemy speed relative to um, time dot delta time, i.e. the time the world is based in. So to do that, in there we just put multiplied by time dot delta time. So basically, all we're saying is your speed is going to be dictated by the time frame. And because the time frame is always set as 1, anything multiplied by 1 is the same number. Anything multiplied by zero is zero. So that means that even when we set our time frame to zero, the spiders are going to stop. So let's save that script. Head back to Unity, press play. And now, if we head towards our spiders and pause, they will pause as well. Perfect. So I think the idea here is um, let me quickly check them spiders there. I just want to make sure they are coming towards us at the correct speed. So they are just going in place. Okay. Let's check why this isn't working. So enemy speed is let's set it to one. Oops. Let's try setting that to one again. Okay, so it looks like we've got a little bit of a bug here. So let's see if we can figure this out. Now, the idea of this is if, for example, we remove enemy speed and have time.delta time and save, we should hopefully see a difference in what the spiders do. And we can see there the enemy speed is set as zero. However, if we get close, there we go. So this one, it, they are coming towards us, I think. Huh. Yeah, huh. so we can see. So if we pause, there we go. Perfect. So they're still coming towards us. Now, the idea of what's happening is it can be a little bit complicated. So um, how can I put this quite easily? It should be able to um, basically understand itself what's happening it's all relative to the world's time itself so having this time dot delta time will enable that to kind of sort itself out and the i think the same will apply for the zombies as well so if we go into the zombie follow we'll just need to put here time dot delta time save and i'm going to move the um, first person controller over to where the zombie actually is in the hope that we can kind of test this a little bit quicker. So bring this here and across. Uh, no, we need to move them inside more, don't we? Because it's over there. So over here and inside. Okay, so let's press play and check this out. And we can see our zombie coming towards us and if we hit escape he freezes and there we go he carries on so that's how we can use time or manipulate the time frame within unity to actually pause the game so um, i think what we'll do next time is i think we still need to kind of look at the lighting a little bit sometimes it'll be a little bit bright sometimes a little bit dark uh, so we may take a look at that uh, we'll create an actual pause menu, so we'll be able to click resume or click quit or, you know, different things like that. And I think we're going to look at explosions. So, for example, let's shoot a barrel 
and it explodes. So this is all what's going to come up, hopefully, all in the next episode, but some of it may drag into episode 32. But we'll see what happens. So guys, hopefully this one has been quite useful because I know a lot of you have been asking for a pause menu. So I will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.